In this video, we're going to talk about MIPS and how they are useful for the interpretation of CAT scan angiograms. So what is a MIP? A MIP is a maximum intensity projection, and uh, it essentially consists of taking information from a set of source images, essentially something very similar to these very fine cuts here, in this case uh, 0.6 millimeter thick slices, uh, and uh, essentially putting together information across many of those slices into thicker wedges, collapsing it down uh, in a fashion that I'll show di diagrammatically in just a moment, uh, so that we see much more information in a given slice. And it also provides nice, uh, you know, beautiful images of the arteries silhouetted against the brain, showing greater extent of uh, the arterial system uh, with a contrast lighting up those blood vessels. Here we see that the source images, we can see as we scroll up and down, we have very thin cuts. And so we have to go up and down to follow each of these individual vessels. Uh, it's certainly possible to do, but it requires a little bit of uh, work on our part to trace out these vessels. And yet, on the thick MIP reconstruction here in the axial plane for the same patient, we see uh, the entire extent or much of the extent of the middle cerebral artery. And it's very easy to see this large artery occlusion on the left side, uh, which of course you can see on the, on the source images and you need to confirm it on the source images. Uh, but in, using the thick MIP reconstructions, it's, it, it makes it that much easier to see it on, on a first pass evaluation. So that's one of the major uses uh, in the acute stroke setting is to very quickly ascertain, yes, here indeed is uh, on this thick MIP reconstruction, a large artery occlusion. Another uh, useful thing about MIPS is you can do them in any plane. Uh, here we have our axial thick MIP, and this is the coronal thick MIP, so we can get another view of this, uh, uh, taking that source information and reconstruction, uh, re reconstructing it in the uh, coronal plane. And so here we have that coronal view of the same thing, that large artery occlusion on the left side. Okay, so how does this work? What is the computer doing with the information from the original CAT scan angiogram to generate these thick MIP reconstructions? We imagine that the brain is this uh, stylized uh, cube consisting of individual voxels or three-dimensional pixels. Uh, then uh, we have a, an x-axis and a y-axis. We imagine each of our thin sections is here. As we scroll up and down in our source images, we'd be looking at different thin slabs here running up and down. Uh, this is our z-axis then as we scroll from, say, the top of the head here to the bottom of the head. And inside of this uh, stylized uh, cube brain, we have blue pixels, let's say that represents brain, and then we have brighter pixels uh, representing the contrast of pacified arteries here inside of that three-dimensional space. And if we were to collapse down the entire brain, we would see this overlaid projection of all the arteries if we followed a very simple rule, which is if we look across a z-axis uh, series of voxels at a given uh, xy location and we ask what is the maximum intensity uh, of, of any voxel in that stack and whatever that is we apply that here in this two-dimensional uh, slice representation and so in this case it's uh, it's not very bright it's the the background intensity of the brain and so this is a darker pixel in our 2d uh, representation on this slice here along this z-axis at this xy position we have uh, uh, two voxels that have bright information and so taking the average brightness uh, in each of these one of them will come out ahead and will be the maximum intensity and uh, presumably that's this voxel right here and that gets represented in our uh, two-dimensional slice and we'd follow that rule in the computer for each uh, of these thin uh, stacks z z-axis stacks of, of voxels uh, as we do that if we is project down along the entire brain and we take that from top to bottom we're going to have a projection of all of these arteries but it's going to you're going to lose that spatial relationship in the z-axis and so everything's going to be overlaid you won't know you know is this a separate artery from this or is this all one big fat artery don't, we, we don't really know so to overcome that problem uh, we simply uh, take smaller wedges than the entire brain, but not so small that we uh, take, take away the advantages of the thick MIP uh, projection. So if instead of projecting across the entire brain in the z-axis, we choose uh, slabs that are uh, not the entire extent of the z-axis, but in this case, let's say 15 millimeter slabs, then that means that this is our new area of, of volume. Uh, 
uh, and then that is what we're projecting along into our 2D representation. Following that same maximum intensity rule, looking through each stack of voxels, where this one is dark, this one has some bright content, so it's going to end up bright, and so forth. And depending on what thickness we set, we're going to overcome that problem of uh, too much superposition of, of these contrast opacified arteries. Uh, and, and at some point there will be an optimum thickness. So you can choose to make it, in this case, 15 millimeters. You can make it 5 millimeters. In this case, because the arteries are running straight up and down, uh, this achieves the optimum projection where we can see individual arteries silhouetted against brain or subarachnoid space. And as we scroll this slab up and down, effectively uh, creating a, a, a stack of 2D images, uh, it would produce our optimum uh, uh, s slab thickness. Uh, but that thickness depends on exactly how you set up the scan and, and exactly what you're trying to look at. And sometimes these will be 5 millimeter thick slabs, sometimes it will be 10 millimeter thick slabs, uh, depending on the protocol used on the scanner. When you're looking at a thick MIP reconstruction in any plane, you can see the thickness, the slice thickness, provided in the DICOM overlay, typically in the bottom left hand here. And here it's presented with a 10 millimeter slice thickness here. It doesn't tell you that that's the slice thickness, but you can see as you're scrolling that number doesn't change. The number above it does, and that's the actual current slice uh, center position. And what we can see is that we're not, uh, in this case, moving this 10 millimeter thick slab by 10 millimeters each time. Instead, we're moving the center of it a smaller amount. And that smaller amount can vary, and again, according to the protocol that's used. Uh, in this case, if you look, it says 180.7 at one position, uh, and we move it a small, you know, one one section away uh, on 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 this stack of of, of uh, slices, and we go from uh, 180.7 down to 178.7 ish, uh, and so it's moving by approximately two millimeters uh, each time, uh, despite the fact that the slice thickness is much greater than that. It's 10 millimeters, uh, so that's how you can tell. Uh, the basic information about the reconstruction that you're looking at uh, on a thick MIP. A special thanks to Fishman and colleagues uh, and to RSNA Radiographics for permission to use uh, the fantastic figures that you saw earlier in the screencast illustrating how thick MIP reconstruction works. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about the technique or about related techniques, uh, definitely check out this excellent article uh, at RSNA Radiographics. You can uh, go directly to their website by following the link uh, shown here, tinyurl.com slash thickmips.